People always ask me on the street, what do you do, what kind of painting? And I'm always like, if I say religious painting, they're gonna walk away. If I say abstract painting, they're gonna look bored. So I, I just say I paint. And you know, come in and take a look. A person will look at the landscape in a way that's different from a person who's not a believer. And just because when you look at the creation, you look at nature, you see God's work makes you look at things differently, makes you look at things that are beautiful with even more gratitude, and, and makes you look at things that are ugly with maybe more compassion or a desire for redemption. I think the hardest part about making art today in America is the culture we live in is so practical. That unless it has an obvious purpose, doesn't have any value. And painting is a contemplative, non-practical. Bernard Lawligan, who's a Jesuit from Canada, he once said, man can't live by bread alone. Well, man can't live by certainty alone either. And the failure to recognize that undertold mystery in our lives, that mystery is always pulling us. I thought that was a beautiful thought expresses at least my reality. Uh, thank you uh, for coming. Uh, thank you for, um, for everyone who's worked very hard, especially Tammy. Uh, 41 emails and counting. Uh, to be honest with you, when she first contacted me, uh, I tried to blow her off. Because <laughs> she wanted to do this soon, and I was like, we don't have time. I, I have a show opening uh, on Tuesday in New York City, and I was like, there's no way this is going to come together in a month. And she persisted, and it happened. Uh, I want to tell you a story, which I think is very important about these kind of events. Uh, it, correct me in the date, it's 2006 when uh, the Boston Red Sox won the first World Series, something like that, in a long time. 2006, 2006, around there. And I was invited out to Iowa for a week to do a show in the brand new museum at Northwestern University College out there. And uh, for a week, I hung out with the cows. They had an event at their museum and nobody came. And across the street was the opening night of the football season. Uh, it was very depressing. And uh, the last day uh, the car service was picking me up. The college was, everyone was very polite, but nobody was engaging my work. And uh, as the taxi picked me up, I said, I want to go to the museum and see that show one more time. And I went in, it was a beautiful exhibit. And this, uh, and I, I caught the side view of this young man. I've always known he had a red scarf. Uh, he was very shy, and then he finally walked up to me and he said, you're the artist, right? And I said, yeah. And he said, thank you. He says, I've been waiting 20 years to see an exhibit like this. He said, I was born around cows and barns, and I love this exhibit. And I told that young man, I said, you saved my time here. Second, I said to him, this exhibit is just for you. And over the years, uh, it's been my pet project to do some of these exhibits outside of the art world. And I, I sort of get crowds like this, small. But I've taken it on as sort of a, a happy cross, so to speak, because I think it's very important. Because I do think our culture is in crisis, and I think religious art is almost non-existent. And I think it's important to begin a dialogue about these issues, and just to look. Uh, that young man, by the way, is a poet, and he still writes to me all these years later. So uh, again, I thank you for coming. And, and the good news is this work will be up for a, a month or so.
and painting does have a very slow process. Uh, it's about, I mean, most people today, uh, I teach too, and most of my students and my son and daughter, and my wife, thank you, Kazumi, she's helped here a lot too, uh, everyone's used to the moving image. And it's very hard now to encounter still images. And it takes patience. And also for, uh, uh, you know, a lot of people come up and say, you know, what is it? Or want me to explain things to them. But uh, the onus is on, on you, the viewer. It's what you see in the work. It's not just about me. That, that's the mystery of painting, I think, of good art, is what do you bring to the painting? Uh, and, I, and I could talk about context and uh, the references of, of certain paintings that these paintings are in dialogue with. But uh, I'm always surprised as to what, what people see in the paintings that I never saw before. But I, I painted some, you know, in my studio working on them for years and exhibits. And someone will say something which is so obvious that I never noticed it because it's their eyes, their experience. So um, I guess we're celebrating uh, stillness, uh, quiet, uh, meditation, uh, Lectio Divina or Visual Divina. Uh, so let me just talk briefly about the paintings. Uh, I'm sure you've seen the large painting. Uh, that is uh, w part of the tritium, the tritium out of the last three holy days of uh, Holy Week. Uh, that's the first one. Uh, and the other two are above my bed. <laughs> Same size. Uh, but this is Holy Thursday. Uh, and uh, a lot of the paintings especially, someone might ask, there, there's a reference to a figure, but there's no face. The Christ face is covered with sort of a beehive or perhaps even a painter's palette. It's, it's rather ambiguous. And, uh, and part of that is, you know, traditional icons is, is really, uh, they sort of extract nature out of the artwork. In a lot of my paintings you will see references to beehives, honeycomb, trees. I'm bringing nature back. And uh, in large part, I think that's to uh, Pope Francis's recent encyclical on uh, you know, the care of our common world. Uh, that uh, creation is a gift that we need to take care of. And, uh, and our Christ walked on this earth, drank its water, et cetera, et cetera. So the importance of nature. Uh, this painting here on the chair, by the way, next to Holy Thursday is a palm, Palm Sunday, that's a very small painting. Uh, this painting on a chair, uh, if you, at some point if you want to, you can look at the back of the painting. Uh, I have <coughs> a copy of the original icon it's based on. It's Jesus at the well with a Samaritan woman. And it's one of my favorite passages in the Gospel of John, and it's all about conversation. And they meet each other and they talk. Uh, what I did with the icon is, in my tradition of it, I took the figures out. They're gone. Uh, it's 2,000 years later. Uh, but I kept the landscape. Uh, and if you want, there's an image of that in the back. Uh, the three here is of uh, the, 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 the the two paintings on the edge are, are of uh, Eden, dawn, Eden, dusk. Uh, permission and prohibition. Permission and expulsion. And in the center image is of the Holy Sepulchre of uh, Easter morning. Uh, the painting of the blessing here is a silhouette of, of the hand of, of the blessing of Christ. Uh, it does have a rainbow motif, a very inclusive, uh, and a lot of bee honeycomb as well. And the painting uh, over here is part of a triptych. Uh, this is the middle panel. If you want to look at the other two, uh, they're the front page on my website. It's in the program. You can go to it, but the three are there. And this is uh, the the piece is called At the Cross. The centerpiece is Barry at the Cross. Again, a very ambiguous face, a hint of a profile. 
and the rest is honeycomb. Honeycomb to me is a, is a symbol of the church, of hard work, of, of immortality, of, of uh, that, that's those ties that bond us together in, in, in the life of faith. Uh, and the other two, which I don't have here, is one of a uh, of a wing, reference to, the God, to John, and the other is a lamb figure, a silhouette of a lamb. Uh, I always tell my students the most important thing I think in the as we approach Lent, as we're in Lent and approach the Passion, that the gospel narratives, the central feature of the gospel is to show that Jesus was innocent. He was a scapegoat. And the Gospels resist that attempt to mythologize him as uh, earning his victimhood. It's clear that Jesus was a victim, uh, was, was completely innocent. And in the context of our own times where I think we're looking for a lot of scapegoats, uh, we need to be reminded of that. And that's why in so many uh, of the Middle Ages and, and Renaissance paintings, you have images of the lamb and the donkey. Why those two animals? Because they are the most innocent of, of animals. Uh, they don't have a bite. Uh, they're easy to pick on. They're easy to scapegoat. And, uh, and our culture as a whole tends to, to find, to look for victim, scapegoating uh, the easiest people who cannot defend themselves, the immigrant, the poor, the sick, et cetera, et cetera. But anyway, this is uh, Passion Tide, uh, the, uh, the time of holy reflection of the, uh, the, of the, uh, the end of the life of Christ, uh, and to live uh, in the imitation of it. It's my feeble attempt to engage these issues, try to update some images. Um, And there's many more. Uh, if you're in New York, by the way, uh, again, go to my website uh, or just put my name in Google. There's a show in New York that's going to be open up until May in East 21st Street. Uh, and, uh, it'll be a continuation of these works. And it's free. I always tell people, art painting is the last free culture event you can go to. You can go to any gallery in New York, and it's free. Uh, other ones, you have to usually pay. And I, honestly, I wish I did pay, but uh, if anyone has any questions, I'll be open to attempt an answer. And by the way, the orange panel in the middle, if you look closely, that's a well. Uh, and again, you can look at the painting uh, that's stenciled on the back of it, the original. Uh, I, I did really well right when I started, uh, um, uh, and I had sort of a meteoric rise in the art world in the early 80s, and everyone kept saying, you're such a spiritual artist. But I wasn't doing this stuff. I was doing really abstract, no representation, mark-making images. Uh, if you, I'll drop some names to you, like but Bill Gates bought a few, Jack Welch bought a few. I mean, everyone bought, and they said, you're so spiritual. So I said, well, if, if you want to see spirituality, I'll give it to you. So I, I decided to, to, to sort of flesh that out. And uh, I don't know about you and your, your line of work, your life, but I can't do anything unless I love doing it. And I love painting these kind of images. And, if, you know, if, I could do a landscape, I could do another abstract painting, but my heart's not in it. And until I get this out of my system, I want to keep going down this road. Uh, so anyway, this is what I did. And, uh, uh, and honestly, there was about 10, 15 years where I was completely ignored. But now I'm, they found me again. <laughs>